So, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who took the time to drop some really kind words in the comments last video. I read through every single one of them, and it really meant a lot to me, so thank you. Today I wanted to try something a little bit different. I have a lot of Unreal 5 tutorial videos planned to publish later in the month, but before we go back into a really specific Unreal 5 tutorial mode, which I know only a really small portion of you can relate to, I wanted to talk about something a bit more general that I think most anyone might be able to benefit from. This video will be a lot more casual than the others. I'll just be playing some background footage of some stuff, but this episode will more closely resemble a short podcast as opposed to a speed tutorial. So feel free to just hide the screen and listen in the background if you want. Now today's topic came up last Friday during the community chill session that we usually have on Discord. It came up again in a DM and once again during a 3D coaching and consultation session. And it seems to be something that a lot of people are really struggling to figure out, especially when they're planning a new project. So I just thought I'd talk about it here for anyone who's struggling with the same thing. So the question is, Hey, I have a cool idea for a project or a game that I'd like to build with my spare time, but I'm not sure where to start. Should I learn modeling first? Should I practice animation? Should I learn programming? And how should I best divide my time between these different skills that I need in order to make my project? And when you're in this beginning phase of development, I always recommend before you start anything, before you open any software or try to learn any new skills, you have to ask yourself three really important questions. Are you there for the journey or the destination? What exactly are you passionate about? And what does success mean to you? Now let's start with the first question, and if you're one of those people who plans to build your dreams, please share your answers down in the comments below because I truly believe these answers will help give you direction, and also I'd just love to see what you guys are up to. Alright, so question one, are you in it for the journey, or are you in it for the destination? And this is not a trick question, and there is no wrong answer here. And don't be ashamed if your honest answer is the destination. I know culturally everyone's supposed to say they're in it for the journey, but the truth is not everyone feels that way. Because if you're a destination guy and you get stuck in the journey, you're going to burn out because you don't enjoy it and you're not where you want to be. Like I learned the hard way that I am not a journey guy. I thought I was, but after many projects I realized that what I really care about is the final product. Does the player have fun? Did the viewer find my work enjoyable or beautiful? Because I've realized that for me personally, the player having a good time in the end is more important than me validating the journey. I do not enjoy the process. I do not enjoy UV mapping or retopologizing or fixing normals or texturing or weight painting or rigging. These are all just roadblocks in the way of what I really want which is a beautiful finished 3D character that I can start posing around and bringing to life in my game. Now some people love the journey. Some people are very passionate about topology. Some people are very passionate about texturing or weight painting or programming. And these people are perfectly fine spending years on a project without making any real process because they're just doing it for the love of the process. But if that's not you, that just means you're probably better off spending your time where you are most skilled or where you are most interested. And then supplementing the areas that you don't like with whatever free or affordable assets you can find available on the market. And to do that efficiently, you need to be able to answer this second question. What are you actually passionate about? Like if you want to make a game and we broke down the different components of game design which are generally required, such as modeling, texturing, materials, shaders, lighting, rigging, weight painting, animation, VFX, particles, sound effects, music, programming, level design, environment, story, marketing. You need to know which one of these you enjoy the most and which ones you really want to avoid. Which one of these do you naturally daydream about or look forward to working on the next day? Once you've got an idea for what field you're most interested in, then you need to ask yourself about your own personal style and tendencies. For example, let's say you think you enjoy the modeling process. Okay, what kind of models do you really enjoy making? Is it more character oriented or is it more environment oriented? Or is it more prop oriented, like weapons and furniture? If you enjoy programming, what kind of programming do you enjoy learning about the most? Is it multiplayer, server, and networking oriented? Or is it gameplay and fighting engine oriented? Or maybe it's cutscene and animation oriented? 
You need to ask yourself these questions because you are human. You have limits, both mentally and physically. And you have to understand that every single one of the fields that I just listed normally takes a professional working eight hours, five days a week to accomplish what you probably think is average. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've been working with someone and they say, I have this awesome idea for a game. So I started learning Blender to 3D model my characters for this epic story that I've been writing for the past few years, but it's been like six months and my characters don't look very good. And no matter how hard I try, I just feel like I'm getting nowhere, I'm getting burned out, and I'm not sure what's going on or what I should do about it. And when I hear this, I'm like, okay, you do realize that the guys who make models like this literally do nothing but model every day, all day. And the guy who made the character you see on the screen has probably been doing it for three years minimum, maybe 10 to 15, 20 years maximum. And you're depressed that after six months of doing this for a few hours twice a week, that your models don't look professional. And when I start to say it like that, I can see the gears start to turn in their head as they realize the obvious reason why the work they do in their spare time doesn't look as good as the professional stuff that they're imagining. And once I can see this happening, the next thing I ask is, hey, I know you really want to make this project of yours and you're bummed out that the 3D modeling aspect of it isn't really looking good, but every time I hear you talk about this project, the things I see you get the most excited about are describing the characters and the story. Like, you know, it's pretty obvious to me that your face lights up whenever you talk about things like the story and the characters. Have you ever thought that the reason you're getting burned out making 3D modeling is because you're a story guy, not a 3D guy? You seem to have a natural desire to spend time writing, and there's nothing wrong with that. Writing is an ancient, classic, and respectable art to spend your time developing. What's going on is probably you simply don't want to spend your time modeling. The time that you spend modeling, you wish you could be spending writing. You're trying to learn modeling to present your story visually, but I'll tell you right now, when you're doing something just to get over with it, your heart's not really there. And if your heart's not there, the audience will feel that. If you try to force yourself to make models, you know, sure, after three years, you might be able to do it. But honestly, I think the time you spend doing that would be better spent making what you already like to do even better. Because what's going to happen is you're going to sacrifice the things that could have been great in order to make the other parts of your project mid at best. That is why I always recommend people figure out what part of development they are most passionate about, spend their time there, then go find royalty-free or affordable assets for all the things that you're not really passionate about. If you're a sound guy who loves spending their time making sound effects, then I really don't think it's a good idea to force yourself to learn to animate. Because you could just go to the marketplace right now and for 10 bucks, get 100 professional animations that probably look better than anything you'd be able to make in six months. And those animations will be made by someone who is actually passionate about animating. Also, you should know that this is actually how most projects are made. Let's take this project for example. The person making this game clearly was very passionate about making an anime high school fighting game with hilarious combat. And that's clearly what he focused on. Now the animations didn't need to be anything special. They just had to be good fighting animations. And so it looks like they got their fighting animations from the market, specifically this pack. And it fits the project perfectly. Everything looks awesome and people are excited to play it. They just let the pros do it for an affordable price and that allowed the devs to focus on spending their time polishing the details, like the dynamic camera angles, the shaders, the effects, and all the icing on the cake that could bring the game to the next level. So when you are looking at the list of things that need to be done for a project, treat it as if you were playing a fighting game. You know how everyone has a main character, and then when you get comfortable, you pick up a secondary. And then on your downtime, you might have a pocket character that you screw around with. Well, a project is the same way. Which one of these skills is going to be your main? And then from that, you'll probably be able to pick a related secondary. And then you might have a tertiary pocket skill. In my case, my main skill is modeling. My secondary is rigging and animation. And my pocket is programming and blueprints. Now, maybe your main is sound effects, which means your secondary might be music. And your pocket might be story. Some people's mains are programming, and their secondary is materials and shaders. 
But whatever your mains and secondaries are, that's where you should spend most of your time practicing and building. And for everything else, you should really be using marketplace assets or royalty-free assets to save time and stress. And there are lots of awesome characters, textures, materials, shaders, animation, sounds, music, blueprints, code, you name it. You can find just about anything for free or for ridiculously affordable prices. The only time I would recommend you not use marketplace assets is if you are more of a journey person instead of a destination person. If you're a journey person who actually likes and enjoys the entire process, and you don't mind the fact that it's going to take you 15 years to make everything yourself because that's the reason why you're doing it, awesome, that's fine. But if you're a destination guy, for the love of God, do not do everything yourself because you think it will give you an edge when people find out you're a solo dev. Being a solo dev is not an edge. It's an afterthought. Trust me, I've done the whole literally make everything yourself thing. And the truth is, if your game is bad or not fun, nobody cares about the fact you made it yourself. You're not going to get any sympathy for that. They might leave you a three-star review instead of a two-star review. But that's about as far as that bonus goes. In my last Steam project, the things I were most passionate about were the gameplay, the weapons, and the combat. And most of the audience left good reviews about those things in the game. And the things that I really weren't passionate about, like the story or the environment, turned out to be the things the players enjoyed the least. And that brought my overall rating down. And if I could do it all over again, I would definitely have spent less time forcing myself to build environments that suck and just bought beautiful environments that looked way better. Or instead of forcing myself to learn how to make music, it probably would have been best for me to just spend 10 minutes finding a royalty-free playlist that would have sounded better than anything I could ever make. But I was young and dumb, and I wanted to be able to say, yeah, I did everything myself. And in the end, I really regret it. You know, I really would have done things differently if I could do it all over again. But you gotta ask yourself, what do you really want? Because that determines how you build the project. Now, the final question you need to answer is, what is your definition of success? Is there a target amount of money that you're hoping to make from selling the game? How much money would you have to make in order to feel like it was worth it? Or, if you are not using money as your metric, maybe instead you're measuring it by player reviews. Would you be happy if the players gave you an average of 4 out of 5? Or 3 out of 5? What would you have to get for you to feel proud of your work? Or maybe your metric is fame and popularity. If your game makes no money, and it gets bad reviews, but you gained 5,000 subscribers, then maybe that's okay if that was your goal. My point is, you need measurable criteria to know exactly how far away from your goal you were. Whether it's money, reviews, or fame, or popularity, you need to know what your benchmark is for what would be considered success, and what would be considered failure. Now I know what you're thinking. The last question makes everyone feel uncomfortable because people do not like making goals. Because once you make a clear goal, you now have a clear measurement of failure. People like to avoid making clear goals because they feel like it protects them from failure. But that's not what's actually happening. All you've really done is made it impossible for you to grow from your mistakes. Because there's no way to tell if what you did was better or worse than what you were aiming for. So remember, are you there for the journey or for the destination? What field are you most passionate about? And what metrics are you using to gauge success? The answers you find for those questions will determine exactly how you should go about spending your time and working on your project. I hope that helps. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day. And I'll see you around. <laughs>